lovely friends, it's Margaret and it is time to talk about the books I read in February. So if you didn't know, I tried to participate in three readathons in the month of February. I failed miserably at all of them, but that's okay because I still read good books, so that's what mattered. Readathons are the means to the end, not the end itself, and so I don't get too worked up about not finishing. I did end up reading two of the books that I had picked out for Blackathon. I didn't keep track of Valentine's at all, and let's not even talk about the Avengers Initiative reading challenge because that is my reading challenge, and I am... Well, it's, it, it's, 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 yeah. We're not rocking and rolling here with that one. We're not. Mostly because I can't finish this one book. Because I keep forgetting I'm supposed to be reading it. It's fine. Okay, so you're going to feel like there are some things missing in this video. And that is because I decided to, or tried to do something new with the stats. And then decided that I don't want to do stats anymore. Um, so I don't think you're going to know what, like, my star ratings were for any of these books. I was planning on having them, so it may be a little bit weird. But next month, I'll go ahead and make sure to, like, start talking about my star ratings and the synopsis and all of that when I am talking about the book. Because I'm just going to go back to a much simpler setup. The first book I finished in February is The Secret Lives of Baba Psyche's Wives by Lola Shanae. Now this was the group book for Team Lit on Blackathon. It was one of the first books I finished just because it is super super addicting. This book delivered so strongly on plot it didn't matter that I was just like huh about 90% of the characters because I needed to know what happened. I needed to know when this big secret was coming out. She had me so wrapped up in these characters' lives and when I say that like I didn't like 90% of them, I didn't like 90% of them because they were terrible people. She had you invested even in the characters that, I want to say despicable, but I would just say even in the characters that just were like, you know, you really shouldn't be doing that. That's really wrong. Like you were still invested in them. Not in them in their story. You still wanted to know what was going to happen. You wanted to know how they fit into the main character's life. You you needed answers is what really you needed answer. The first couple of days I read it, it was perfectly like okay I'm in control. This is this is I'm I am the one reading so, and then I got to like day four and I was not reading the book. The book was reading me because I was like I can't put this down. I need to know when this blows up in everyone's face. This was a heart-wrenching book. This really dug into women's lives in Nigeria um, and polyamorous families. It went into some of the flaws that were in this particular marriage as it was. It showed how sometimes when you don't have great choices, you choose the best choice you can find. It's so great because it shows these women being able to be ambitious and rude and messy and harmful and it still tells you a good story and you're, at least I wasn't sitting there blaming them for their circumstances necessarily. I mean, I was blaming them for some other people's circumstances, being like, you know, why, why are we doing this? But, you know. It also is really interesting to look at this because this is a narrative that is in part about infertility. And it was really interesting to see that story get flipped on its head. I think a lot of authors have tried to tackle this subject matter. I think a lot of authors have done it well, but there are authors that haven't quite missed it. And she really, really, like, hit it. This is also one of the books where I really kind of paid attention to and enjoyed how the book was written. Normally, I'm not one that's paying attention to prose and stuff, but there was definitely stuff where I'm sitting there going, this works for the story. And I know there are people out there that are going to hate it and say it's a flaw, but I don't think so. I think they're wrong. The next book that I I finished was A Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. If you know me, you know I'm a big fan of Angie Thomas. I read The Hate You Give and I read it at that point where, ugh, just that book got me. Like that's one of the few books that has almost made me cry because you got to the end and she was reading those names. The narrator was because I listened to that one as an audiobook. I've listened to all of her books as audiobooks because I just love them as audiobooks, but they were reading those names and that is such a powerful moment in the book because I'm sitting there and I know the stories of so many of these people that she's mentioning and I hate that I know their stories because I shouldn't. I shouldn't have to know their stories. These people should still be with us. Not, not to get on a soapbox, but like the, the names in the back of that book should still be pretty much anonymous and not known by anyone who is not friend or family and yet we know their names on a national scale and there are so many stories and misinformation that go around and so much debate. Concrete Rose is a very different narrative. Now it is still very much about being a black kid, about ha the struggles that Maverick is facing 
in regards to like the racism that he faces, the struggles he's facing when it comes to the school system, when it comes to the fact that he's 17 and has a kid all of a sudden. Anyways, so that was the first book of hers I read and I have loved every single one she's written since. This one was no exception. It is heart-wrenching, but it is also funny. She does such a good job building friendships and family dynamics. You feel like you are actually reading about real people when you are reading these books. I, I, I just, like, there are conversations that happen in her books that I'm like, yeah, I could be having this conversation with my friends. I could be having this conversation with my brother. I could, like, you can feel the conversation. Maybe not word for word, but, like, the gist of it. What you're talking about. The thing you're bonding over. She does such a good job of writing families. I just, I love it. They are so real. They are so raw. And they also will crack you up. They will. I feel like this is more of a review of Angie Thomas than Concrete Rose. That said, I absolutely adored getting Maverick's backstory. She really, like, threw in some parallels there between Mav's backstory and Star's story. And you're gonna just sit and question your life for a little while because some of those are gonna hit you. But oh man, I had so much fun reading this book. I love how she is able to balance the light moments with the dark, heavy moments. She just knows how to take an audience through a story that is going to have moments that really just rip your heart out. She knows how to take you through that story and lead you up to those moments and give you a little bit of breathing room, even as she is giving the characters breathing room in the story. I'm awed at the amount of plot that she was able to pack into the story, the amount of stuff that Mav is having to deal with. I just, like, you can see why he is the person he is in Hate You, The Hate You Give reading this book. You can see the threads of that person coming in. I also have to give a shout out to this narrator. He did a really good job of reading this story, even if all of his women sounded like 14 year old girls. That was my one gripe with him. He couldn't do a female voice very well. They were all high and whiny. Uh, but he did such a good job with every single other aspect of this book. It was so good. If you have a chance to listen to these as audiobooks, listen to them as audiobooks. They're really good. The next book I finished was Winter Keep by Kristen Kishore. This is the final book in the Graceling Realm series. There's rumors there might be another book coming about another character, but this is supposedly the last book. It was good. I liked it. It is my favorite book in the series because, in my opinion, it has the best romance. Like, it just delivers on the romance front. You know what I mean? It got five stars for the romance alone, okay? Okay. I just loved this book. I I did. I loved watching uh, the, one of the main characters get to kind of grow and recognize his flaws as a child. I think we need, or as a, a young adult, I want more stories like that where we see boys going, you know what, some of the stuff I believed as a teenager was really toxic, was really wrong. We can see them, and number one, admit they're wrong, because I, I think that's a that's a problem you run into, especially with men on the internet. Uh, and then we got to see them go, okay, but now I've worked to change this. And the fact that he did the work, yes, thank you. Also, the mystery, the intrigue, the political machinations that were happening in this book, she keeps you guessing throughout this entire book. Like, I had suspicions, but it was never 100%, okay, yeah, it's gonna be this. It was, okay, so it might be this, or it might be this. And I'm sitting there trying to take all of these little pieces and figure out which, which of this is this. I love her characters. They are so much fun to read about. They are so complex and messy, and I enjoy that. I love the fact that she writes characters that are allowed to doubt themselves, they're allowed to feel unsure and insecure, and they do it in a way that feels real and normal, even though they are in a world completely different from my own. Also, like, can we just do... Bitter Blue on Drugs, guys. That was super embarrassing, but also really, really funny. Really funny. Uh, this is another one where she knows how to interject humor into plots that will go deep, dark places. This one didn't go as deep and dark as Bitter Blue. I think that's the dark. Bitter Blue is probably the darkest one of the series. This didn't go quite as deep and dark, but still, she managed to do that. Ah, uh, they... 
it's so funny. They introduce a new main character, and at the beginning, I was like, I don't care about you and your mommy issues, ma'am. Can I get back to the characters I actually care about? Because I want to know what happened to them. Because, you know, this entire thing starts out with Bitter Blue being swept off a boat. And I'm just like, okay, but I need to know what happened to her. Where is she? When is she going to reunite with her people? When is Gideon going to find her? These are the important questions. But she did such a good job of getting you to just be invested in this other character whose name I can't remember. Can't remember that at all. And you start out not liking her and then you're like, rooting for her somehow? How did that happen? I don't know. Definitely was one where with this particular character, I had to remind myself, she's 17. She's 17, Margaret. She's 17. Margaret, she is 17. She's not an adult. Don't put adult standards on her. I think that kind of, like, this kind of bridges this gap between, like, YA and um, adult fiction. I think it's a good one if you are someone who likes to read a lot of YA and you're looking to get into nonfiction. Not non adult fiction. Or if you read adult fiction and you're looking to get into YA, I think Graceling is a really good series because it does have some of the darker concepts. It does have some of the bigger plots. But also, it's got kind of that youthful, fresh fast feel that you have in YA fantasy. The fourth book that I finished in, uh, what month is this? February? February. The fourth book I finished in February was Sibylla Burn by James S.A. Corey. So the Expanse books continue to not disappoint me while also simultaneously kind of disappointing me. It is a very weird and confusing place to be with books where I'm sitting there going, there are storylines in the show that are just stronger and make it a stronger narrative for me, make it a more inclusive narrative, make me more invested in the story. I am invested in these books because of the characters from the show, I have come to realize, um, because I love them and I will literally read anything for crumbs of Naomi Nagata. Now, they have always done a really good job. This one has three male points of view and one female point of view. I think the fact that they decided to switch one of those points of view to be a woman in the show was a smart choice, stronger choice, definitely, like, she's a much more sympathetic and humanizing character in the show than the character that she is, it is her counterpart in this. So you definitely feel the lack of female characters if you have watched the show and you know how strong their story lines are and how strong the female characters are, just like, they're, they're just awesome and badass and I still am waiting for my Naomi point of view book. We, can we do one book that it's Naomi's point of view and Jim is the sidekick? But you can also see that they have intentionally been adding in female characters so you don't feel the absence as much. Even in James's point of view or Baj's point of view, Havlock's point of view, we're not going to talk about. Havlock, I, my dude, why? I was, Havlock was one I was like, I was rooting for you man and then he made poor decisions. I came through at the end, but he made poor decisions in this book, and I'm just like, you're on the wrong side, sir. History is going to show you are on the wrong side. Why are we on the side of the psychopath? Probably not actually a psychopath. He's probably too smart to actually be a psychopath, but that's a whole other thing. I have been on mental health TikTok for way too long, okay? So my point is, even though we have three male points of view to one female point of view, and it does feel a little bit uneven, it doesn't feel as uneven or unequal as it could have because they are intentional about making sure that we are having other women in the narrative that are badass, that are making things happen. Other women who are pushing the plot forward even if they aren't the main character, that are influential and crucial to what is happening. I appreciate that. This continues to be my favorite science fiction series that I have currently ever read. That's a way to go about it. I just really appreciate the way they are able to make character and plot the main driver of this story and weave in all of that world building and the mystery and the technical stuff. They put that in there but they put it in a way that engages you further in the story. It does not draw you out of the story. That's my biggest pet peeve sometimes with science fiction is that the world building also with high fantasy or epic fantasies other stuff the world building can sometimes when it's trying to, like, it's meant to engage you and give you more about the world, but still the way it is delivered pulls you out of the world and has you going, oh my god, why are we talking about a sword for four pages? I'm sorry, I'm going to be talking about that forever, Christopher. I apologize, but it's just what's going to happen. They do such a good job of integrating that into the plot and having it be parts of the character, so I... I just love this series. I love the plots. I love, like, it's the social commentary is not the main point of these books, 
but it still has that social commentary and I appreciate that. I do think these books get a little white savory because the whole point is that Jim is the only one that is able to be the mediator and in the middle and see both sides and I'm just like, okay, but one side is clearly wrong. Okay, we're like, like when we're talking about some, especially in this book, somebody, one side is clearly wrong, guys. Like, it's wrong. Like, you're infringing on people's human rights and abilities to survive. So, maybe stop. The next book we need to talk about is Akata Witch. You can't see that, but look, okay, there we go. The next book we need to talk about is Akata Witch by Nnedi Okorfor. So I am finding that with Nnedi Okorfor, at least with the two I've read, I need to read more. I'm finding that she gets me with character, she gets me with world building. Uh, this one, she gets me with the magic system because you're sitting there listening and wanting to know more about it. Her plots don't always deliver for me. For this one at least, I don't know if it's I missed something because I did listen to this as an audiobook, so I may have tuned out for like 10, 15, 30 seconds and missed something important, so I am going to be rereading this. I had a little bit of trouble following, I don't know right now whether that was the book, whether it was my mental state, whether it was the fact that I went in thinking it was a YA or I got it thinking it was a YA and it turned out to be a middle grade so it was less focused plot wise than I wanted it to be. That said, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very good. One of my favorite things about this is rather than like Percy Jackson or Harry Potter where you have this magical child who gets pulled out of their world to be in this magical world, this one, she still has to be a part of the normal world and like deal with the fact that like she's got schoolwork and homework but she's also supposed to be training to learn how to use this magic. I loved that touch. It is such a wonderful nuanced thing like chef's kiss. Yes, thank you. I don't know, maybe other books do that, but I feel like you, like, look, I can think of, hold on. All of these, those aren't fantasy. That doesn't matter. Yeah, you think about Percy Jackson, you think about Harry Potter, you think about any of Cassandra Clare's series, basically, especially like City of Bones, you think about The Cruel Prince, um, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, not so much because she's basically an adult. Like, a lot of these that are set in the real world but you also have the magical world, they don't do that. And I really appreciated that she did with this. I really like that. I also, this got real dark for a kid's book. My goodness. Wow. It, wow. It's funny, I think that younger kids can handle dark stuff a lot of the time better than adults can because we know what's happening. For kids, it's just a fun, cool story. Some of the adults, some of these adults, I just... should have been in jail for asking children to do what they were asking children to do. Nothing weird or kinky. And I really liked how Sunny was aware of the fact that these adults were asking her to do grown-up things, that they were asking her to make take risks and make sacrifices when she was 12. I like the fact that that was acknowledged and she's like, this is wrong, this is unfair, even though it still ended up being what needed to happen. We need more of that. We need more of characters that recognize, hey, these adults should not be asking me to do this because I am 12. They should be taking care of this themselves. And the final book I have to talk about is Slay by Brittany Morris. Don't ask me where the cover is. It has grown legs and walked off, okay? It is somewhere in this room, somewhere in here. Do I know where? No. I loved this more the second time than I did the first time. Like, just, it, it, Ugh, the way everything comes together, I was so much more aware of some of the crap that one of the characters was pulling. I was just like, oh, oh, these were giant red flags the entire time. How did I miss this? What is wrong with me? That was, that was a realization. I'm just saying, oh, oh, like there, I can, I can pinpoint the moment I gave up on this one character. Can pinpoint. Like it's a specific line where I was just like, oh, you need to go and learn some misogyny before you are around any other women ever in your life. Just, you need to go and learn a few things. It is such a complex and complicated book because even the characters that are wrong in this book are right about some things. And it's not necessarily like, it is so, it's funny. We, um, if you wanna see our live show where we get into it, I will have that linked up top. We really tried to be careful about how we talked about this character because there are places where he was right. He definitely was right, but there were also places where you could see the misogyny. And I, yeah, yeah, 
Like, it's okay to hate him because he's a misogynist. It's not okay to hate him because of some of the thing, other things he said. I was so much more appreciative of the platonic ties that happen in this book. I don't know if that's because I'm reading it the second time and I know what happens, or if it's because that I am getting older and starting to realize that romance is not the end-all be-all of life. Even if it is mostly the only thing I want to read about most of the time. This is just such a rich book. There is so much that you can get into and dig and learn about. I was really invested in these characters the entire time. Kira has such a wonderful, strong storyline and her struggle is so realistic. What she's going through is so real. There, I, da I dare you not to have parts that you do, you, you might not be able to relate on every level, but I dare you to not have parts where you do relate. I have never been through the kind of harassment that Kira has had to go through as a black woman on the internet, obviously. But I still had to be like, yeah, yeah, I understand. Like the, the, the desire for a place where you want to be able to go and know that you're not going to be name called. You're not going to have to deal with, like there's a reason I'm not involved in online gaming. gaming. Number one, I don't have the patience for it or the money, but number two, it's kind of a scary thing because like you just hear so many horror stories from other women. I mentioned this, I think, in the live show maybe, but like I refuse to go into comic book stores wearing a comic book t-shirt. I just do because I know there are dudes out there that will see that shirt and they will question my legitimacy to be there and I don't want to leave that open. Basically what I'm trying to say is I understood that insecurity of having, wanting to have a space that you know is safe and you cannot blame someone for that. I definitely stand on the, like, let these kids have their game thing. Like, it, it, it never says no white people in this game. It just, you have to have a black person that trusts you to give you the code. And so, like, if they don't trust you, maybe you should work on that. I definitely am on the, um, there's nothing wrong with the way this game is set up and distributed because we have clubs here where you have to know someone to get in that are very exclusionary. Like, leave these kids alone. Have I convinced you to read this book yet? I feel like I've just been rambling, but I enjoyed it. I love it. It was such, just, it's such a good read and I think it's one that I definitely want to recommend to other people and one that I will be reading again and again. So that is my February wrap up. I would love to hear from you about if you've read any of these, if you're considering any of these, let me talk you into reading The Expanse or at least watching the show because the show is just a gift. It is beautiful. I love it. And yes, so if you're feeling chatty, chat with me about these books in the comments. If you are not feeling chatty, leave me a, like the little game, what's the word? You know what I'm talking about. It's not a console, cause the console is the p controller. The little game controller emoji, leave that for Kira. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a, a thumbs up. Also, I will have other videos over here. Check them out. You might like other things on my channel if you enjoyed this video, so go ahead. There they are. You have no reason not to click them. Unless, of course, maybe you have a time crunch. That is it for now, my friends. Happy reading, and I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy, nerdy things. Bye!